Hi guys, um, I just wanted to come back and do another video since I haven't done a video in the past couple days. This one's going to be over Halo Infinite. I actually have a list of stuff you want to grab it. Um, Alright, gotta put my suit on. It's kind of chilly in here so I had to wear something that's a little more comfortable and warm. So, we're going to be going over Halo Infinite. I got a bunch of details that we should be going over. I know a lot of you are super skeptical. Let's see how this goes. So, Halo Infinite. You obviously, from the trailers, you know, it's Master Chief. It's not any other character. There's not going to be, like, Locke in there. Um, humans lost everything, as in the trailer. Um, uh, Zeta Halo destroyed. There's a huge chunk out of it. And Chief is rescued by a really cool dude that has a sad family history right now. Not very fun for him. So you see at the very end they're about to go into a fight. Um, you're not sure it might be a guardian, it might be Cortana herself, um, but you don't quite know. I'm probably thinking a guardian because it's, EM it's an EMP. So, but you know, it could be anything at this point. So, you go in, that's what you know so far. So I'm gonna go into a little more of the details of what's gonna be going on uh, with Halo and what we should be expect from it. Um, I know most of, yeah, most of you are skeptics, mainly just because Halo 5, how that worked. So there's like a fan blowing in my face. Um, it sucked, yes, Halo 5 sucked. I feel like Halo 5 sucked because of the writing. The story in general, the basis of what they were trying to go for was very cool. Just whoever wrote it did a very bad way of displaying it and actually showing what they were wanting to portray in it. Uh, just with the characters, Locke was... You don't want a mechanical, no feeling, no background. I mean, there's a little bit of background, but basically no background character. Especially, I mean, like, you can... You, can, you could do that with Master Chief because there was so much going on around him in the beginning of the Halo and it was so interesting because you were like, ooh, mystery. But they already showed Locke's face. They already gave a basic backstory, which wasn't very interesting. And what little backstory we did know about him just wasn't good. So he just was overall a very poorly written character along with every other character in Halo 5. Just very mechanical, no feeling, no attachment, and that's what you need for a story to make it good. Now we're done with Halo 5. No more talk about Halo 5. Um, but yeah, so what you'll be seeing is a lot of old styles come back like the armor. The Gen 3 the armor is new, but it has a lot of those old style touches. Dr. Halsey did work on it. Um, like I think it was a few yeah a few years after you see that first trailer of them on um, the Halo ring, you know, and they're throwing up all those like uh, SOS things trying to get help, but there was no one there, so these Marines were limping across this little prairie, I guess. <laughs> um, but it was a few years after that. And then she updated it again a year before um, the whole incident with the Halo ring just crapping out and the humans losing. Because uh, it was in 60. Yeah, it was in 60 and this is a 61. So, year after. And then however many months it takes for that guy to find Master Chief um, in space. So that's kind of where we are right now. Um, but you see that it's new armor, but it has the old touches because they want to appeal to those, uh, the people like me that like the old armor. So I appreciate that. And then bringing a, they're bringing a big mix of the old stuff, like music back. So they're going to bring back, um, a lot of kind of the old themes and, incorporate them with the newer um, music 
which I can appreciate. So I always like new music, but I also like the old feeling the same kind of, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Just kind of feeling somewhat comfortable and not something new because like Halo 5, I don't know what they were doing. Okay, done, done with Halo 5. Sorry. <laughs> done with Halo 5. But also, it has the old feeling of CE, like not only just because of the pelican of like where you are, but you can see that he has like an old style marine helmet on the seat. There's just like so much old military feel. It's not sci-fi anymore. It's back to that military feel, which it originally was. And also the control room. The control room's back. You see him walking in there and Cortana's like, I chose you for a reason. We would be perfect together. <laughs> and that's going to be so fantastic. Um, but it's moving back to the kind of the old feels of CE, which is, I really appreciate. Um, because that was my favorite game of all time. It's amazing. Also, um, with Mendicant Bias, if he's going to make an appearance, he's probably going to make an appearance on Zeta Halo. It it might be like a terminal from like Halo 3 and how you just get to interact with him a little bit and see a little bit into his past. But unless if like you read the, the books, uh, you know very little about him and hopefully they bring him a little bit more out into the game because he is an incredible character. Oh my gosh, just like... I feel for that, <laughs> that AI, like, oh my gosh, it's just, I want to know more about him. He's such an amazing character. Um, and I'm not sure, but when the, uh, visor boots up, you see a bunch of codes and you see a bunch of different things. It does mention a hint, maybe at armor abilities. You're not sure. It just says abilities, like check. Like it were, it's working. That might mean just like his shield or something. I don't know what, but it does say that. So it may be armor abilities. I'm not sure. It would be kind of cool for Forge to have the armor abilities back because that made such a big difference in Forge and just multiplayer and fun stuff like that. I wouldn't mind not seeing it really in the campaign, but in multiplayer in certain modes I would really like to have that back because I'm a person that I love those little quirky things you can do with the the uh, armor abilities they're so much fun and also a total Halo Reach buff so but besides that not like very very slight minute amount of chance that it might come back but they're also trying to incorporate Halo Reach customization so maybe they're trying to incorporate more things from Halo Reach because they did so well in that game. So, I don't know. Moving on, um, we will see more stuff in the upcoming months. Uh, Chris said that, Chris Lee, um, posted that we should be seeing more and more things in the upcoming months. Now we're not sure what it would be. It might just be the flight program to really get us into working with the developers, like highly rated um, Halo content makers and things like that that are in the community, they might bring them in just to have them like, hey, check this out. Does this work? Does it, do you think the other fans will like it? Which I would really appreciate that because the best thing they ever did was listen to the community. And I can appreciate that from 343 is them reaching out and listening to the community. Um, I'm not sure if it's just gonna be more cutscenes, more trailers, I don't know. But speaking of cutscenes, cutscenes, um, that original E3 trailer is a straight cutscene from Halo Infinite. So that means that the, that's what we're expecting for quality as cutscenes. So um, I'm pretty psyched about that. That's, I mean, they had a really good, that was a really good cutscene. Yeah, it's not like Halo 4 opening, but that's an opening. It's not a like cutscene. So. I can really appreciate that. That's awesome. That means that not only the graphics in the game is going to be better, but the cutscenes are going to be better, and I hate when cutscenes are just like, it just, total turn off. It's awful. Like in Halo 5. Uh. Um, but that makes me super excited for that, to see that amount of graphics in something that's just one of the first cutscenes. Also, um... It will be on the new Xbox, 
So in holiday of 2020, I'll be launching with a new Xbox, if you guys didn't know that. Um, it was pretty obvious even before they release it. Um, and it's going to be on PC immediately. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait a few years. It's going to be on PC as it comes out. Also, we're going to see more Master Chief. There's no more side characters. They learned their lesson from Locke. Yes, I know a bunch of you are huge Arbiter fans, but honestly, I appreciated the Halo games more when there wasn't a side character to play as. It's hard enough to develop Chief, Chief as a person when you got an, a whole nother character you're trying to develop. So I appreciate that. Um, yes, the Arbiter's cool, but he's not as cool as Chief, sorry. That's just me. <laughs> um, and new game engine. So the new game engine, Oh my gosh, so they were just bragging about it. So I'm so excited. I'm hoping it's great. They say that it allows for better graphics, better facial um, interactions where you can see their faces better and it's not so, like, clay looking. It looks more realistic. So that means graphics better, less glitches, just so many new, like, more smooth movement. So we'll see how that works out. We don't know much about the game engine just because they kind of keep it a little more quiet than... The others because they don't want to release too much about how the play style is but I'm hoping that it just creates for a more smooth um, outlook on Halo honestly because there were some parts in other Halos where I'm like oh my gosh this sucks like I wish it was this way instead of this way because it was just too choppy but I'm really hoping and they said that it's now allows for them to create the Halo game they've always wanted to create so cross our fingers um, then also Chris Lee talks about um, this story will mark the beginning of a new chapter for Chief and also but it will also respect and continue the threads that lead up to this point. So that means yes it's going to respect everything. We don't have to worry about a whole new story coming out because I know most of you were worried about that because you see that it's a nice, they said it was a spiritual reboot. And everyone's like, oh no, are we going to like completely cut it out? No, don't worry. They're going to respect the old stuff. Yes, it'll be like a new jumping in point. So it will, if you, if you played the Halo games before, okay, more things will make sense to you. But if you haven't played the Halo games before and this is your first game, you can jump in at this point and still enjoy it just as much as the next person. So I can appreciate that because, um... Definitely with like some of the other Halos you were just lost and I feel like it's a good thing for the series to kind of reboot itself and make a little bit more so we can have more Halo and more fun stuff comes along with it. Maybe a Halo movie? I'm hoping for a Halo movie. Oh my goodness, I've been dreaming about this since I was like six years old. <laughs> Alright, so that was that with um they made points that I really wanted to hit about what's going to be new with Halo Infinite and what we should be expecting. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more into the story of Halo Infinite now. Uh, so, leading from all of that, we're going to be going into the story. Um, so, we know Cortana's bad. Duh. <laughs> well, she's either hit with a logic plague or she's so rampant that the uh, Forerunner technology, such as like the Guardians and stuff like that, maybe mess with her brain, took her over, tried to say, hey, this is better for you. I don't know. We don't know yet. I'm thinking it's probably the logic plague, but it's whatever. So either contain and fix, Cor contain, fix, or destroy Cortana. That is how it's going to be at this point. So first of all, it's either going to be like a mendicant bias, um, offensive bias, one-to-one -one thing where they created a new Cortana from uh, Halsey's copies of her brain, so the clones of her brain that she still has, three left I believe. Um, so she's either going to create a new one and it's going to be like Cortana 2.0 and they're going to go in and it's gonna be basically what happened to mendicant bias where they created a new AI that's very close but a little bit different that can outthink her and destroy her um, Roland 
This is a huge theory going around right now. I'm not sure about it because I, yes, I liked Roland, but I didn't like him that much. I don't want to think of him as a hero. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know why. He just doesn't sit well with me. But, um, Roland as the, in oh my gosh, hey, stop playing with that. My cat's playing with, um, bubble wrap over there. But met Roland being the new offensive bias. They reboot him and make him a better version kind of or of Cortana that can think faster and better than she can, which I just can't see Roland as that, especially reading the first book. I just I can't. That's why another thing that bothers me. So either that where he's like kind of like the offensive bias and she's mendicant bias. So that's another um, kind of mirrored theory of what's going to be happening. My cats. Um, or it's going to be trapping her in that thing because when he puts that chip in his helmet there's nothing in it. it says no AI detected and in both trailers and the uh, cover art of the game which it's really early to put cover art for the game but it's whatever um, that you can see that there is an AI in his helmet in the chip so I'm wondering if that's kind of like her, him capturing her and putting it? I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. Because I just, I feel like that's the best. I mean, the whole new Cortana 2.0 would be pretty cool. But more realistically, I think the trap theory is better. Um, <clears throat> so they would either use it, because it says that there's a weapon system in there, to either, so that could either mean fixing her into a weaponized, like, they used a weaponized system to infiltrate her and then fix her with maybe some type of like technology they have to like restore her um, to fix the ones that can't fix themselves or to kill her, which that'd be interesting. Or maybe Halsey took a brain sample from the three that she has put it in there and it kind of just refreshes Cortana. It'd be more like a reboot onto a clean slate. It's still, she probably still has the memories. It's just, it's still a reboot. So maybe people might speculate it's not quite her, but I mean, if she still has the memories, technically it is her. I don't know. It might be that way, but those are the, th the three theories and then the three theories for the trap theory. Um, but that's that. And then, Zeta Halo is destroyed. So, they said this was a huge part of the story. At least Chris did. So, hopefully, we get a little bit more to kind of speculate off of what we have right now. It's kind of hard to do anything. So, the only thing I can think of is from the things that I've been watching and I've been reading is, I don't know, like protect assets, protect, protect the um, the index for Cortana to protect um, them from building more Halo rings to protect from building more Guardians I don't know someone destroyed it to protect something why else would they do that because um, pretty sure it's not gonna be the flood I'm not sure maybe they might bring it back because of Halo Wars 2 which that confused the crap out of me I don't know why they did that but, um, I don't think it's gonna be the Flood, because that would be just too confusing, uh, for new Halo players, I feel like, to bring back such an old, ancient enemy and you have no idea what people are talking about. Um, but I think it's just gonna be more of asset protection. People would rather have destroyed than it be in the wrong hands, um, so I'm thinking that's gonna be more of the lines of why the Halo ring was destroyed. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the story. There's not a lot of, to go off of. We have a few Halo Waypoint posts, a few Twitter posts, and a few trailers in which one of them's a cutscene. And usually cutscenes don't really give out much of the game because of the fact that it's trying to introduce you into it without giving away the story right off the bat. So that's that. That's my thoughts on Halo Infinite. I personally, from what I've heard and seen and been researching, I think it's gonna be fantastic. 
I am super excited about how there's those small, intricate little things. Like how when Chief was in the control room, they threw in a Halo 3 song in there while having him marching down a control room, mirroring that of when he marched into the control room in CE. But I'm super excited about it. That's also because I'm a Halo fangirl and I have hope. I'm hoping that it's good because if I, if it's not good, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Um, I'm probably going to stop playing games. That's how hard it's going to hit me. So um, we'll see. But I have really big hopes for it. I think with how much money and time and with how the game engine allows them to work like 10 times faster, that means that like this game is going to be fantastic and they're not going to feel crunched on time because they've two years. Well, they, they had two years to start it from and now they have a full year and they can test the flight program and with their new game engine, they can work even faster than they could have before. They, well, they said that they can. Um, so I'm just hoping for the best. Um, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm going to get whatever Legendary Edition comes out. It's gonna be mine. But thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me your thoughts and what you think. Are you kind of a skeptic? Are you hopeful and maybe think it's going to be great? Uh, but besides that, leave it in the comments. Um, check me out on Instagram. Uh, it's Mistress Chief. I have more content there and I try to post daily sometimes, most of the time. Uh, but thank you for watching. Take care, guys.